Stalin and the Soviet military and political leaders, who were interested in opening a second front to reduce the losses of the USSR. Clearly, after the defeat of Nazi troops at Kursk, the USSR showed if the Allies would open a second front or not. The Soviet Union was capable of ending the war in Berlin and without their support. In principle, the second front became unnecessary. If it had a point, it had only one, to reduce losses to reduce the time of war and, most importantly, to create a basis for cooperation between countries of the anti-Hitler coalition after the end of World War I. I. Similar findings were made in London and Washington. Therefore, the leaders of the British Empire and the United States gathered in Quebec and began to discuss secret plans for fighting against the USSR, which included the use of Nazi troops. Doctor of History Talent and Fallon argues that there is one document. It happened to be declassified in 1978 and is now kept in the National Library in Washington. It discussed the issue of the United States and the British Empire joining in an alliance with Nazi generals for joint military operations against the Soviet Union. All this took place on August 20, 1943, three days before the end of the Battle of Korsk. Then the Office of Strategic Services OSS of the United States compiled Memorandum No. 121 left Bezirmansky, Valentin Fallon, Discovering New Pages international issues people and events slash slash come Nikolai Popov 1989 it was approved by the Joint Chiefs of Staff and presented at the Quebec conference and personally to Franklin D. Rosa Belt and Winston Churchill the OSS advanced three options one attempt to resolve our differences with the Soviet Union immediately, and to focus on common interests that we have with this power. 2. America and Britain for some time continued the strategy and policy, regardless of the strategy of the Soviet Union, in hope to achieve the defeat of Germany and to strengthen their position through the settlement of certain conflicts with Russia. 3. Attempt to turn the power of an undefeated Germany against Russia, while the Nazis or the generals control it. The authors of the memorandum made a meaningful clause stating that the Treasury, if the preference will be given to the third alternative will not go smoothly. Why? First, it would not be easy to convince the public of England and the United States in the need to break with the USSR. Second, if it's possible to defeat the Soviet Union only by force, the Anglo-Saxon powers later have to again this time without Russian help, take up the difficult and perhaps impossible task of defeating Germany. In the Quebec report we read that at the meeting Generals George Marshall and Henry H. Arnold, Admirals William D. Leahy and Ernest King, English military leaders Alan Brooke, Dudley Pound and Charles Portel considered if the Germans would not help the Anglo-American troops enter Germany to repel the Russians. 
regardless of the decision. It was, thankfully, negative. But the fact of the discussion about the methods and time to betray an ally speaks about the anti-Hitler coalition. They abstained from betrayal. Could it be that, as foreshadowed by experts in Washington and London, the USSR finally exhausted its offensive resources? Toward the spring or summer of 1944 the time of the alleged invasion of Europe, American President Franklin D. Roosevelt did not directly support this OSS plan, approved by the military. In the fifth volume of the book Essays on the History of Russian Foreign Intelligence Essays on the History of Russian Foreign Intelligence, in six volumes, Volume 5, 2003 it's noted that the decisions taken and planned by the United States and England in Quebec were fully reported to Stalin by outside intelligence. In particular, Memorandum No. 121 can be found in the 1978 collection of documents declassified by the Americans. However, it's most likely that the main provisions of Memorandum No. 121 became a part of the top-secret Operation Rankin. So, what exactly is Rankin? One of the stages of the plan meant the British and the Americans joining in an alliance with German generals or the Nazi leadership. At that time they were considering Heinrich Himmler, Alfred Rosenberg and Wilhelm Canaries. In 1943 the chief of Military intelligence of Nazi Germany Admiral Canaries was meeting with Stuart Menzies head of British Secret Intelligence Service Mile 6 on unoccupied territory in France. The head of the American OSS William J. Donovan the OSS was, in fact, created by the British Mile 6, according to some sources met Canaries twice, once in Spain and once in Turkey. And these were the intelligence leaders of belligerent powers. According to some expert estimates see Larson Martyrus in Conspiracy of Marshals, British Intelligence Against the Soviet Union 2003 Admiral Canaries was an agent of influence of British intelligence Mile 6. In accordance with the plans of the First World Information War, World War II for the Soviet Union should have ended somewhere on the pre-war border of 1941 or even on the border of 1939. This is confirmed, by the way, by a document from the beginning of 1944 by the so-called Polish government in exile based in London, in which the main enemy is declared to be Soviet troops and not Nazi troops. And the border of the Soviet Union in accordance with this document was to be that of 1939 Joseph Linder. Sergei Cherkin, Nikolai Agden, Diversenti, Legend of Ubianki, Pavel Pseudo-Plato v. 2008. Among the documents was Order No. 1844 by the Commander of the Polish Armed Forces, in which he said, at the moment when the Soviet troops crossed the Polish border, the Polish government in London and Polish society expressed their iron will to restore the independence of the Polish territory in the East to the borders of 1939.
The initiator of the plan was Russia's worst enemy, Winston Churchill. Behind him was the city of London, the financial groups of the elite of the British Empire who sought to preserve the might of the British Empire after the Second World War. Thus, one must conclude that the British Empire was the instigator of the outbreak of the First World Information War. In accordance with the law of the boomerang the British Empire became the first victim of the information war. It soon ceased to exist thanks to the skillful operations of Stalin's information intelligence structures. Operation Rankin was developed by English General Frederick E. Morgan together with the heads of Mile 6 and the American OSS Stuart Menzies and William J. Donovan. Stuart Graham Menzies 1890-1968 One of the leaders of British intelligence. United 1943 Major General educated at Eton College. During the First World War he served in the Grenadier Guards, and then at the headquarters of Field. Marshal Douglas Haig, where he began to deal with intelligence questions. After the war he remained in military intelligence led the 4th Section Military Intelligence and then was Deputy Director. In July of 1939 Menzies was sent to Warsaw, where he was given the captured secret German cipher machine Enigma which later enabled the British to decipher German codes. On his return to London he was appointed head of British Intelligence's Secret Intelligence Service for Miles 6. During the war he established links with the head of the Agwear, Admiral Wilhelm Canaries, and began to receive information from him. In general, the actions of British intelligence during World War II were very successful. Menzies led the intelligence service for almost 13 years and became a legendary figure in the intelligence world. He was a staunch opponent of the USSR and considered it necessary after the war to deploy a series of covered operations against the Soviet bloc countries. In 1952 he retired Konstantin Zaleski, who was who in World War II, allies of the USSR, 2004. William J. Donovan 1883-1959 Head of the Office of Strategic Services OSS In 1914, when the First World War began, Donovan was a wealthy and successful New York lawyer. In March of 1917 Donovan was appointed commander of a battalion of the celebrated 69th Infantry Regiment fighting Irish New York National Guard. In November of the same year the regiment was transferred to Europe by sea and took an active part in the fighting. In the 42nd American Division Rainbow during the 19 months of his stay in France Donovan was wounded three times. For his gallantry in battle he repeatedly received military awards. After World War I the former commander of an infantry battalion Donovan, through the intelligence network of the State Department of the USA, was sent to Russia where he was for a short time a liaison officer of the United States Army at the headquarters of the White Movement of Admiral Alexander Golchok. Upon his return in 